And we're back with the JLH Class A Amplifier. Hello there, YouTubers, and welcome to another episode of Dr. Cassette's Workshop. As I already said in the last video, it'll be a while until we can really continue working on this, because right now uh, I'm just over here in the workshop for a few hours, and there's really not enough time to really dig back into this. However, Still, I wanted to uh, try this and test at least one of the two channels, that one that I already got wired up, uh, and see how it performs. Well, I've been messing around with this for about half an hour, and just so that you don't get all too excited, let me tell you, at the moment it's pretty terrible. You can already tell, or you can already see, one thing, maybe, you can see that white alligator clip lead, and that is shorting the input out to ground. So what's up with that? Well, unfortunately, for some strange reason, the damn thing started oscillating again. Now, we have had those problems in the past, and I did manage to fix it. So I'm really surprised that the oscillation is back. But uh, I got, uh, got my uh, speaker hooked up right there, and the scope is hooked up to that as well, as you can see. And if I go ahead and if I take the alligator clip lead off of the input, as you can see, we're getting some nice oscillation. It's uh, 6.2 volts peak to peak at 5 kilohertz, according to the uh, automatic measurements. So that's far from ideal. Now I can go ahead and connect an input source right there. I got my uh, trusty JVC KDV6 cassette deck playing, which I chose as a signal source because it has an output level control. Uh, however, that turns out to be unnecessary because <laughs> you're not able to hear anything unless you have it up to maximum volume. And uh, okay, uh, this is probably going to be a bit loud, but let me disconnect the ground wire from the input and uh, we're just going to hear what it does. Okay, enough of that disaster. So what we've seen on the scope screen is, for one thing, the 100 hertz noise. That is, of course, the fault of our imperfect uh, power supply. And I really got to say, I uh, well, I expected this to be pretty audible, but I did not expect this to be that bad. I mean, that is really just crap. So, uh, that's the, well, how should I say, the low frequency that we've seen when uh, looking at a long time base. And then I try to zoom in and show you that we not only have the mains hum, or the 100 hertz rectified mains hum, we also have a high frequency signal going on, which appears to have a relatively high frequency. And that's just added to the hum. And then somewhere in between all that, we actually have the music signal. Maybe you're able to hear that little bit of rather faint uh, signal, a little bit of uh, treble coming from that cassette. So, yeah, that is far, far from ideal. So... We'll definitely still have some work to do. Uh, so, uh, that's it already. As I said, I'm not going to dig back into this. It's just a quick test run to see if it works. And, well, obviously, 
Well, actually, you can't say it doesn't work. I mean, it does do something. Well, definitely not what it should do. I'll have to think about this, and if you have some helpful ideas, definitely feel free to post them in the comments below. I'd be very happy to hear from you, hear your feedback. So, thank you for watching this video, and see you again soon.